I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, guys, we're down to the last couple projects on the 45, and we started this project, oh, I'm embarrassed to say how long ago, and we haven't finished it yet, and that is upgrading the non-skid on the transom and the sugar scoop steps. So we liked doing a little bit different non-skid up by the anchor and on the coach roof when we did our paint, and <laughs> hello, Stella. And um, so we are gonna be doing this in three sections. There is the uh, port and starboard transom, and then the rear, transom deck there's a fancy word for it i just don't remember where it is what it is um we are going to uh get all the non-skid sanded down get everything painted new non-skid and brighten it back up again you can see she needs a bath that's coming tomorrow uh, but in the meantime we have taken all the hardware out we're wrapping up for the day and i'm taping over all the holes so that if it does decide to sprinkle overnight it doesn't sprinkle into our engine room um, it's going to be a really cool transformation and it's super easy so follow along we'll show you guys how to upgrade the non-skid to something that well we think works better all right i know some of you guys are going to ask why aren't we molding our non-skid and just replicating the factory non-skid well um, we actually like the feeling of the soft sand on, underneath our feet and we think it gives us a, just better traction and this is a really high traffic area and it's constantly wet and we just like it better it's the good old Paint Shaver Paint Pro. Shaver. Um, I am not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. And it's amazing. Um, you have to bleep that. Yeah, you have to bleep that. So it's attached to a grinder. It's a custom milled head with uh, carbide and or in my case, uh, there's a diamond tooth in here as well. And this allows you to plane across a smooth surface and adjust from a hundredth of an inch to a tenth of an inch. Of what you want to take off um, and what I'm using this for is to take off this non-skid I want to get the bulk of the material off so I'm not chewing through a bunch of well through a bunch of abrasive and sandpaper on the grinder so I'm gonna take this just knock off the top surface of all those little pyramids on the non-skid get the bulk of the material off and then I can go and fine-tune the sand um, and get a nice level surface I mean it's pretty level now but I'll level out the surface so that it'll be ready for non-skid. Um, just the right tool for the job and shortening the project up a bit. All right, so obviously we built this solar array two years ago and now we're getting down to doing this non-skid upgrade. And I have originally bolted this in on each sugar scoop. And these are bolted in. It's made hundreds and hundreds of miles worth of transit and solid and secure and all that. But I am going to put a riser puck on this to get the stainless up off the deck a little bit so water sheds off. And I also need to grind the non-skid down below to one, give a good solid spot to be able to bond the epoxy, but also be able to get the non-skid off of the deck around where this post space goes. And the only way I can do that is by lifting up the uh, solar array with the halyard. So I've got it tied up there. You can see right off the top corner. Kim's gonna go up to the helm and operate that main halyard winch with the handle. So I'm gonna yell to her and tell her as I take these screws out to put some pressure up on this solar array via the, uh, the main halyard in this additional line that we tied up. That's gonna pull it up in the air, allow me to work around underneath of it, and then we can lower it down and secure it when we're done working at the end of the day. So this stays nice and secure to the boat and nothing gets damaged. All right, let's get on it. Kim has winched up the halyard and taken weight off of this, and you can see how this is floating free. We just needed to get it about an inch or so up off the deck, um, and then now I'm able to get in here with a sander and I can move this away to work, and then I'll be able to not only get this non-skid down, and obviously the dirt that's under, under there out, <laughs> but then what I'll be able to do is grind this down to raw glass, just like I've done here. That's gonna allow me to get a good bonding surface to epoxy down this riser puck that I'm gonna show you here um, when we get ready to do that. So, all right, back to sanding. All right guys, so back in the boatyard when I picked up this solar array, this is the puck that I made that I was telling you about. 
I basically made my version of G10. So this is West System Epoxy. This is with 1808 biaxial glass. And what I did was, is I think I laid about 10 or 12 layers full of, of uh, uh, glass and epoxy in this. Once that was done, what I did was, is I took a three inch hole saw and I drilled a three inch hole in that. That gives me just enough riser to be able to get that foot for the solar array up off the deck, but also allowed me to um, create a, what the hell is it that allowed me to do? Oh, it allowed me a space just big enough for the foot of the solar array so that when I go set the foot back down again and pre-drill everything, I'll be able to have just enough shoulder in there to be able to uh, get a nice Sika bed. Now I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna mark this puck uh, as far as where it reaches to so that I can then uh, grind that down to raw glass and that's gonna allow me to mix up some epoxy and be able to uh, epoxy this down and then I'll be able to put the solar array down, take the load off of the halyard, but the halyard's gonna stay on there through this portion of the project just as a safety measure because until we're done, I can't screw the solar leg down into this. So. There you go. Let's get back to it. All right, guys, what I've done is I've sanded all the non-skid off, taken it down to about 50 grit, and this is actually ready for a non-skid application. But first, what we have to do is we're going to have to paint all of the smooth surfaces around. Um, we do two coats of that here all of yep this all the right smooth here. stuff and then once it's cured or tape ready or tape dry we then tape that off and do the non-skid layer itself so before i get any paint out i want all the the prep work done for any patches holes chips nicks and what have you now there used to be a ladder here we wanted to move the ladder to the other side so there was four holes here i had some lightweight cloth this e-glass here and I did four layers in here in addition to filling, backing the, the back of the hole and then filling the holes with cabosil. So the four layers, when I went to sand it, it was actually a recess. So what I've done is um, sanded the recess because when I sanded it flat, you just saw a shiny spot in the middle. I'm now gonna clean it with some acetone and I'm gonna hit it with three or four more layers, what have you, of glass. And then tomorrow when I come back and it's cured, then I'll be able to uh, uh, just grind it completely flush. Now over here on this puck, the puck is installed. The cabosil is continuing to set up. I'm going to leave this overnight and tomorrow, and if this is being held up, as you notice, it's loose by the main halyard. And I'm going to sand this flush, dress all this up, and then uh, that uh, section will be done. And now both sides will have a raised puck for the solar arch. And I've actually built the arch so that it sits at the proper angle with that puck on there. So before the uh, epoxy kicks off, let's do this. So you're just wiping it down with acetone? Yep. Brush acetone, it. I just, I sanded it, but I just want to get any, any debris or any dust. That would be a manatee. <laughs> that was aggressive. It's, it's like I work in a zoo. It is. All right, while I do this, you think you can see them down there? I don't know. I'm gonna watch you do this for a second and then I'll try and see the manatee. They like to bathe in our... <laughs> oh, oh God. They like to bathe in the mountain of water. Jeez. See them? No. It sure is loud, though. Them. All right. All right, layer of glass. So here's a little pro tip for you guys. I don't cut the glass to fit perfectly anymore. I just cut it and put it in. And then when I sand everything flat, I just sand off all the excess. So there's no sense in trying to cut these perfect little circles and see where the low spots are or anything like that. Nah, you don't need to do that. I'd rather spend my time doing something else and let the sandpaper knock off that extra high spots on the side. My sanding disc is perfectly flat and uh, it'll give me a nice flush finished product when I'm done anyway. Right. Is it weird doing this work on the water? Like the last time we did this, well, all the last times we did any fiberglass work, we were on the hard for this boat and the other boat. It is kind of weird. Um, you know, I'm 
really conscious of making sure that nothing gets in the water. So we are um, obviously using our sanders with vacuum attachments and all of that and vacuum up any debris so that none of it goes into the intercoastal. Other than that, I know it's, it's a better view than being in a boatyard. <laughs> yes, it is. Does it make it any easier to work not being in a boatyard, or do you feel like it's a little um, harder? I feel like I'm less, I don't know, I don't feel like I'm in jail. <laughs> um, and there actually is, it's a little, it's not as hot because there's not asphalt that I'm standing on mm. or standing around, right? It's just water. That's so true. when the breeze comes across, it kind of lightens or lightens, it cools off the air a little bit. Um, no. I'd much prefer it. If I can do it in the water, I'd much prefer doing the repairs or upgrades or whatever it is that I'm doing on the water. With the exception of cutting plywood. That's a pain in the ass to do on a boat because there's, well, there's no place to do it. <laughs> I'm just trying to put enough layers in that I'm bringing up the low spot in the middle. So the low spot in the middle is going to be up to the height of this gel coat. And then there's going to be kind of a bulge around the edge, like a donut. And when I sand it off, it should all be perfectly flush tomorrow. All right. Well, let's not bore the people with stuff they've seen a hundred million times. We'll come back and look at it tomorrow. All right. Carry on. Night. It's beer 30. Hmm. All right, guys, it is monday and we are now just about ready to get the perimeter paint done on the rear sugar scoops and the transom so that we can uh, put this cool new upgraded uh, not skid on um we've been dodging a little bit of rain and what have you but it looks like this afternoon we're going to be able to get a coat on and then tomorrow morning knock out the final coat uh, of the perimeter shiny stuff and then we'll be able to move straight to the non-skid uh, as far as the, the granule non-skid part the following day, which would be Wednesday, if it doesn't rain. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what it's like. We didn't film a bunch of the sanding because, well, it's boring. Sanding but, uh, is boring. <laughs> what's that, Kim? Sanding is boring. And look how beautiful our cockpit is. Doesn't it look so organized and Stupid. train wreckish? Um, so yeah, as soon as we get the non-skid done, then we got the boat detailers coming in because we're really busy. And they're going to come in and polish her up and make her look all pretty. And yeah, then she'll be done on the outside and um, she'll be ready for her new owner. So here we go. I'm going to show you a few clips of our prep work and then of us rolling without tipping with the roll additive on that Alexial paint that you've seen us use so many times before. Here we go. Enough talking. Let's paint. How's it going? <sighs> Great. <laughs> I'm trying, but I think I'm failing, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I might change my method. I don't know. That looks like that's going to be fun to get off. Yeah. Yeah? No. All right. You can see we've taken the non-skid down where the grids used to be. It's all smooth. The reason you see kind of blotchiness is they spray gel coat inside of the mold before they put the glass in and it, there's a slight undulations and difference from the spray gun. But, so. This is the four spots where the old swim ladder was. So I filled, backed them, filled with cabosil. And then this is about six, seven or eight layers of e-glass. We just needed to get a nice smooth surface. The reason you see the concentric rings is that it was slightly dished. And as I built up the layers and then sanded it across, these are the different striation layers of the, the glass. But we're nice and smooth. This is inside the non-skid, so we don't need to do any fairing on that. We'll be able to non-skid directly over top of that epoxy. Here's the raised puck to hold the solar array leg. And that way 
if any water gets on here, it runs off and the bottom of this leg isn't sitting in water or water is not constantly draining underneath of this leg. It's being held up by the halyard. Yeah. All right, now you notice that it's shiny here around the back of the boat. And the reason is, is we painted up around the edge and you see where we stopped before, right here. Now we're going to continue that seam and take the non-skid to, to this edge here and continue the actual gloss paint in all of the drain tracks and all of these rises. When we painted the 50, people asked a lot of questions about why you use a four inch ruler. <laughs> <laughs> Care to share? Yes, because you can only cover so much at a time. And if you move too fast, it's extremely difficult to keep track of your wet edge. And uh, yeah, it's not as, it's better that it takes a little bit longer and you get better control over the paint distribution and wet out than, than just trying to roll it over a, a bigger area with a bigger brush. Bigger isn't always better. We have a holiday right here. Yes, I do. Kim loves to tell me when I've got a holiday and go back right after I've loaded up the roller full of more paint. It's not my problem, buddy. I love it when it's painted. It's all shiny. So pretty. Yeah. It sure is. All right, reducer and paint coming up. Snap. All right, with the squeak in the background, of course, tell me what what you're doing, because you're not painting the entire surface. <laughs> Why? All right, so I'm just painting the perimeter to make it smooth. So all the exposed stuff that's not going to have non-skid on it. And when you do non-skid the way we do it, you paint all the smooth areas surrounding the non-skid area with however many coats to final finish, and then you let it dry to, uh, they call tape dry, which means you can stick tape on it and rip it off without damaging the paint. That's usually about 12 to 24 hours after the final coat. So this is the first of two coats on the perimeter. Then we'll, we'll wait for it to be tape dry, and then we'll tape off everything that I'm actually painting now and then what we'll do is we'll actually roll a layer of paint in on the non-skid area and sprinkle the non-skid in, kind of like a glitter when you were in, in uh, elementary school. Wait for it to dry, and you vacuum, vacuum off the excess, and then that gives us our non-skid texture, and then we'll roll two coats of paint over top of that. Cool. That's it. It's a lot of painting. It's, yeah, it's a lot of painting. Okay, get back to it before your paint sets. Yeah. sucks because it's getting late. Yeah. That squeaking is awesome. I promise it's the boat, it's not me. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be watching. But you can't see anything? But I can't see anything, so I'm going to video it instead. <laughs> Alright. How do you feel that this is going and what's our potential for non-skid tomorrow? You know, this is going really well. I'm hoping this is going to be our final coat. Depending on what it looks like in the daylight, mm. we'll determine if we need to sand and do another coat. Uh, this section of the boat uh, may need another one, but the other side of the boat we're going to be able to do non-skid tomorrow for sure. Yeehaw! Yeah. So it's yeah. funny, I can see so much reflection of you as you're moving in yeah. that paint. It's glorious. It's so glorious. pretty. Beard hairs that yeah, you get in there. Beard hairs. All right. So I just have to do down here on the step, and then around that corner there, and then I'm done. Yeehaw! Then it's beer thirty. <laughs> I've already had three. <laughs> did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. Plus yes, a margarita. You, yes, you did. And a dark and stormy. Oops. Some, somebody's having a good day. <laughs> this is why I'm painting. 
Rolling the paint and sprinkling the non-skid in small sections is a one-man job anyway, so I started cocktail hour a little early. I'm so excited to have this project complete. So we have applied the soft sand all over and it looks like a beach blew up on the boat. More yoga. And now we have more boat yoga to get it vacuumed up. So exciting. Um, oh geez. Can I do battery? Are you kidding me right now? I don't even know where they are. Yeah. Where are they? really gonna throw that to me okay let's do this i got it don't drop it oh fuck. the pressure i did it hooray this one says it's full are you ready yep yeehaw okay so the paint's still a little bit tacky but we're trying to get this up before the wind blows it all away So if you have to do this over a large area, what you need to make sure you do is wear socks. <laughs> because when you go to step over top of it, and even though we've accelerated this paint and it's darn near rock solid underneath, it's still just a little gooey. And I'm afraid that if the moisture from your feet or if you have any oils that gets tacky, it's gonna cause an issue with adhesion. So I'm gonna be wearing socks through the rest of this process while I walk on here, um, because I have to stand where I'm working. Back to vacuuming. This is not scientifically proven, but it is our hypothesis, and we are like rolling a great with it. Theory and so far, <laughs> so um, good. I'm not leaving any footprints, so Hooray. I can absolutely uh, put this down as a pro tip. So far, so far. All right. So every now and then, you're going to find a spot where either there was a holiday or you missed some paint and it didn't stick, and you're going to see little spots like this. This is a Jenny wine. So. What I'm gonna do is after I'm done, <laughs> I'm gonna come back in with either uh, like a toothpick or a Q-tip and I'm gonna basically apply paint, not over the sand that's here because I don't wanna build it up, just around any of the smooth spots and then I can sprinkle some sand in and I can let it sit so I can do that repair or modification before it's all set because let's face it, shit happens. Um, and we want it to be as good as possible, but we can fix it and we will. I think the vacuum might be getting full. So this is what's just hysterical. We used literally, this bucket was probably, I don't know, two thirds full. Yeah, easy. And it was empty at the end of this process. And now the cool thing about the sand is that we can. I can't do this with two hands. There you go dump it right back in. Continue to vacuum up the mess. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> now I'm filming. Tell me what you're doing. All right, so I'm just taking this chip brush and on the edges where I missed, I'm just doing stip away. So just taking the very tip of the brush and like right here, I'm just gonna tap, just give it a Tap it in, just tap, tap, tap it in. And I want to stay away from, can I have the Q-tip? I want to stay away from adding any paint over top of any non-skid that's already been put on. So just build it up. Just need to get enough paint, just as a glue, to touch right in the edges come back in bam that emerald shit. that emerald that bam 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 oh, i gotta get jamming hold on your tray's in the way hold on bam 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 bow bow ciao <laughs> this vacuum is absolutely legit um not sponsored it's not, but I'll leave a link um, in the description for our Amazon uh, store because this thing is absolutely freaking awesome. It's wet dry and 
the cool thing about this is, is that this filter, it's a wet dry filter, so you can wash it and dry it out and reuse it again over and over again. Instead of those stupid the paper, paper ones. Bags. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right, so this five gallon jug was full when we started this project, like the 45 project. It's about up to, uh, about up to here. It was about to here today when we started, so I've used two inches of this bucket, but we used every single last drop and then had to scoop up more over top. That's how much we pile it up to make sure that we get a nice even coverage across the entire surface. And then you just scoop up extra and, and uh, or scoop up the excess and put it back in and, and reuse it again. Super simple, but if you're gonna have a project that you're gonna be doing, you really need to buy more than what you think that you're gonna need um, or work in smaller sections, because otherwise you're gonna run out in the middle of the project and then, well, then when you do vacuum it all up, you're gonna, you're gonna have enough to finish the project, but you gotta do it in small sections, so. Easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm. Beer 30? Beer 45. Oh, good, because I already started. <laughs> <laughs>